All right, so Beardiest, last episode, uh, we ended with me giving a rambling, esoteric discussion of uh, Industrial Revolution era steam generators. Now, a lot of that was lost due to human and technical error, but we still have time to circle back and focus on your fifth point, which is that the Warhammer 40k universe exceeds all other tabletop fictions based purely on its balls-out nature. All this is... being a reference to Industrial Revolution era governors on steam engines. This is true. Not testicles. 100%. Okay. So, think about all the other known... Um, you know, it, it, 40K is a mixture of the 80s action movies that you and I both grew up with. You know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Commando, Predator, um, Sylvester Stallone's, you know, Demolition Man, um, So, so this Dolph game Lundgren. originated, the 40K universe, uh, initially was created in the 80s, right? Or early 80s, late 70s? Um, I'd have to say probably, uh, I think 40, uh, Warhammer Fantasy was probably, that was the first one who came out, and I think that was early to mid-80s, and then fan, um, 40K came out mid to late 80s. Okay, so even later than I thought. Yep, and it's, I don't know, the there's just something appealing. Badasses. There is, I mean, and you don't, you don't see those type of movies anymore. You know, you I mean, really think about really created a, a John McClane or a um, what was Arnold and Predator Duke Dutch yeah. Dutch. Um, any any of the characters from Predator really are all timeless. Or Ripley from Aliens. I mean, now we have uh, who's our tough female? Is that girl shooting a fucking fire bow into uh, Helen Mirren's asshole? I don't know how that movie went. Um, yeah, I think you're talking about uh, Starving Games. Yes, yes. Um, but we, but we really haven't. I, I would say uh, maybe some of the the superhero genre has come somewhat close to creating that action hero, and um, uh, Stallone has created a just a. Ghost, almost a satire of what that genre used to be with the Expendables, but uh, even the, even Seagal, who's arguably one of the weakest links of the action hero genre, was leaps and bounds above what we have today. So, and you, and you're saying that uh, Warhammer 40k harkens back to this glory day of the action hero. I believe so. Um... I mean, it's. I mean, when you when you look at it in the fluff, all right, you know. It, and it's, I, I it's, hear you say this. Sorry to stop again. I, I I don't want to throw this whole thing off the rails, but I hear you say often the words fluff and crunch. Could you just uh, add those to our lexicon? Give us a quick definition. Sure. the The fluff is the 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 flavorable, um, the flavor lore. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really add much. It's, it's fluff. It's, 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 um, frosting on the cake. It's fluffy. It's, it, there's no substance to it. It doesn't have much, um, you know, uh, lighting, right. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's flavoring. It's, it's perfume. It, it just adds a little bit of accent. The crunch is the actual gameplay. The actual gameplay, whether it's yeah. on the tabletop or video game, um, whatever. Um, the crunch is, you know, it's, it's, it's got bite to it. It's got substance. Um, so, the, so the fluff it, is the Shakespeare. The crunch is the physics. Exactly. Okay. So um, in all these fluff, you always have these, these, these um, you know, larger-than-life characters. 
Um, particularly with the Space Marines, again, I mean, it's it's just like Master Chief. I mean, why does everybody find Master Chief? Like, why is Master Chief in the Halo series so successful? He doesn't even talk. I mean, right. I mean, you don't, you don't even know what he looks like. He's a, I mean, you, you break his character down, and you, you, I mean, there's nothing good about him. He's an enigma. He's not. And maybe that's his appeal, is that everyone can, can put their face on his. Right. I mean, there could be the, the, um, the age old, you know, project yourself onto the protagonist, um, theme. But I mean, if you actually take a look at the background, you know, this, this, uh, this guy, he was abducted from his family when he was like three years old and raised to be, you know, a perfect killer. You know, they, they were educated, trained by the U S government or the, you know, earth government, just like the space Marines were educated, and, you know, they had these genetic experiments done on them so that they're bigger, stronger, faster, smarter than the average human being. And they're just, they're trained to kill. Mm-hmm. And you break that down, it's like, okay, that sounds, you know, in terms of a video game setting or a movie setting, that sounds good. But you pull that back and it's like, how's this guy going to go shopping? Like, how's this guy going to get his groceries? Like, how's he going to interact with a, um, you know, load of people at Hannaford Price Chopper? or the, you know, 40th millennia equivalent. And you know, that's when you know that you know that's where the that's where the gaps start to happen or like, you know, what if this guy wants to just, you know, raise a family? So how does 40k deal with that? Or do they don't. They don't. Essentially Marines, I think, um, you know, they they it, it's expostul it's postulated that they're essentially immortal, but the fact is is that they're always going from war zone to war zone that um, eventually they're going to die in combat. Like there's no chance for them to discharge, get an honorable discharge and, you know, lay some pipe and raise a family of super mutants and, you know, go off into the sunset. Which, you know, I mean, I think, I think it would be an interesting aspect. You know, I think I looked at it. I mean, in terms of a movie setting, no, but, um, you know, I, I, I look at it more of in like, like what if, you know, one of their heads finally snapped, not even looking at it from like a chaos space marine thing where they start having orgies or, you know, worshiping some weird fucking cult, but, you know, just take it, looking at it from a sci-fi perspective and you take this guy who's bigger, faster, stronger, meaner um, than any other human being ever created. And, you know, so far he's he's bought into the program. You know, he, he's, he's a patriot. Mm-hmm. Then what if his mind finally snaps? You know, he gets PTSD. Like, what's going to happen? You know, what's to stop him from snapping and killing his own side? Yeah, these all sound like issues that were brought up in, in my opinion, the, um, the the shamefully Oscar denied film, Universal Soldier, starring Jean Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren. Uh, now, are you referring to the original or the, the, the original, number seven? Of course, of course. Oh yeah, um, you have to harken back to the original. Yes. So I, I guess we'll take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the Space Marines. We've never directly addressed them. What are they? You say they're all they're all pretty much '80s action heroes taken to the nth degree, just extrapolated upon, um, squared, cube rooted, injected with creatine right into their urethras from birth. Um, Expand upon on the, the 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 aura, the allure, and the background of the Warhammer 40k Space Marine, which is also it's, it's essentially the tentpole of the entire universe. It's the it's the driver. Correct me if I'm wrong in saying this. It driver, is. I think it's 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 the cash cow. Cash cow. Uh, and they they really do. They they and they they take it and they they multiply it by several aspects. Like you have. The salamanders, 
the salamanders chapter, mm-hmm. and they're not labeled after the little you know little new creatures. It's the uh, the salamander of I believe it's some Middle Eastern uh, mythos. It's like a fire demon, mm-hmm. um, and they're essentially the uh, honest, honestly. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not trying. Chapters to... as Boy Scouts are divided into troops, or even um, you know, like modern day military units. You have the first division. Ah, you have the second division. You know, they have their own banners. They have their their chapter the flags and airborne. Exactly. You know, they have their. Their colors, they have their Not battle honors. Not fought ad- valiantly at the uh, Battle of the Bulge, but also supported racial integration in the state of Alabama. They were. They, the, 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 the governor did have to call them because the, uh, or the federal government did have to force them in because the, uh, the National Guard was loyal to the governor, who was racist at the time. So, um, you know, the salamanders, they're essentially... They're like the only completely black. Ironically enough, they're the only completely black uh, Space Marine chapter. Uh, so, they, at the, are you talking about their armor or their skin tone? Skin tone. Okay. Yep, and they, I mean, there's more to them than just skin tone. And I mean, it's not just like what we think of as like African American. Mm-hmm. Um, I think their coloration is actually it's been described as like coal. Like they come from a volcanic planet, so their skin tones kind of crazy like that, but uh, then you have the Space Wolves, who I guess are pretty popular, but they, they, they like, take this whole wolf theme, like, way too far. Yeah. And they're essentially, like, they're Norse like that one Vikings. American gladiator. Yeah, with, like, the long hair. Yeah. Or, like, they're, like, Dog the Bounty Hunter. You know, they have, like, the long hair, the beards, and, like, it's, like, every other word out of their mouth is wolf. Like, they have, you know, they're Space Wolves, they have a wolf patch, they have a wolf skin over their wolf nuts in case you step on a wolf and he decides to, howl, you know, bite his wolf judge. Um, but they're essentially, they're supposed to be Vikings in space. Yeah. Um, you know, the Blood Ravens were actually created by THQ with permission of Games Workshop to, uh, for, the, for the whole Dawn of War series. But Space Marines as a whole, you know, you have these children. So there's, they get, there's some fiction created specifically for the games. Right. Right, and it, it, it depends With on their sector. Bluff, as they say. As they say. So space marines are essentially, you know, kids who, in, in unlike in Halo, they don't get stolen. It's a, it's a it's a very prideful thing if your child is selected to uh, join a space marine chapter. Every space marine chapter has their worlds. They recruit. They go through uh, an induction process, um, and then in the, like their teenage years, they they're subject to all sorts of um, genetic modifications in which they get extra organs implanted in them. They get a little bit of uh, the old vitamin S injected into them. And they grow, um, you know, up to the guy who played the mountain in Game of Thrones. You know, he's like, Pat you know. Pat Bjornsson, I believe. Is- yep. And, they, you know, they're like seven foot two, 380 pounds. Hmm. Um, and then they slap, you know, uh, essentially a tank on them. Uh, give them a weapon that fires Bang, a fifty in, in the form of a battle suit. In a, in the form of a battle suit, mm-hmm. and they uh, they they essentially fire a uh, you know a fifty caliber machine gun from the hip and uh, call it done. And, and honestly, and that's that's in, in, in the flood videos. They've they've also fired missiles and uh, uh, magma, I believe, and flamethrowers. Oh yeah, they have all sorts of weapons. Yeah, um, and they're the most balanced. They do. They they have the most uh, balanced weapons. Um, but um, you know, a lot of a lot of the hardcore fans dislike the Space Marines because it's like okay, it's it's okay to be badass when you're you know eight foot tall and you have all these super weapons. But what about the guy who's like five foot eight? Hmm. And uh, that's where the Imperial Guard comes in. I um, mean, they're just your typical guys, you know, nothing nothing different than typical army soldiers now wearing, um, you know, Kevlar vests, and they're going against these these orcs and these other psychotic space marines and all these other horrors of the universe with not but uh, a flak vest and uh, a small caliber rifle. So it's almost like they're a, uh, a mall cop in downtown Iraq. Yeah, they're like the Iraqi guard. Um in the uh, or they're like the National Guard, you know, getting drafted up in a in a serious hardcore 
war zone effort, I, and they're the like National well, Guard. But it seems like the, uh, the 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 chasm between the two is even wider than that. 